God who enters into a relationship with the people of Israel saves them, um, and their response is the law. So it sort of flips the way we look at that completely around. It turns it completely around where it's not the law first that brings about a relationship with God, but rather the relationship of God comes first and then springs forth the law. And so what that is actually called is covenantal nomism. Um, and nomism is just a fancy word for legalism. And I give the, the official definition up there that religious tendency which aims at the control of both social and individual life by making the law the supreme norm. And so in covenantal nomism, what you have is the law sort of being a badge of honor. Um, it would be something that you would wear um, in society, in your culture, to say, hey, I have a relationship with God, and this proves it. Um, it it's the same thing as, you know, if we wear buttons for uh, political uh, candidates. You know, we're wearing a badge that says that this is who we support. This is what we're a part of. This is, you know, what, what we want to happen. And the same idea comes out from covenantal nomism in that um, they are wearing this, they are showing this Hellenized culture that is encroaching it upon them that they're different, that they have this relationship with God, that they've been justified um, because of the covenant that they have. And let's see, did I miss anything? No. Okay. So, with all of that, if we look at the theologies of the Jewish context we have, we look at what Paul was saying, and I'll leave that up to you to interpret whether or not Paul was saying that um, Jews and Gentiles, even though they had different understandings and different ways in which they were um, in relationship with Yahweh, uh, and so that they would have different ways of enacting that or responding to that, wanted them to be in the same church. Um, whether or not Paul wanted Jews and Gentiles with their different understandings and different justifications to be in the same church and you know, have different theologies in the same church. I'll leave that up to you to decide if that's what Paul was saying. But what happened is that we did split. Um, we did uh, come up with different theologies and decided that our theologies were so different that we had to have different um, religions. And so to begin with, um, we have to sort of understand when did we start thinking of ourselves or when did Christians start thinking of themselves as separate? When did they name themselves as a separate sect? Now this doesn't necessarily you know, imply that they thought they were a different religion because the Essenes thought they were a different sect, the Pharisees and all these others thought they were a different sect. But the first indication that we have of you know, Christians calling themselves Christians um, and having this self-identity was from St. Ignatius in the second century. And he is the first one who coined the term Christianity. And if you remember from Dr. Nichols' lecture, he also talked about that. Um, we also have evidence of Christians participating in uh, Jewish communities and Jewish festivals all the way up to the fourth and the fifth centuries. Um, and if we look at some of the sermons of John Christenstone, um, he actually says point blank, well, you see it right there, you must stop going to the synagogue. You must not think that the synagogue is holy, a holier place than the churches are. So obviously Christians at that time were still going to synagogue. We're still participating in these Jewish communities that you've got. And so the question is, you know, when... When do we finally say enough is enough? When do we finally split off? Well, if we go back to our modern interpretation um, and look at you know, that introspective conscience, I think, I would say that um, it is with Augustine that we begin our split, our final split from Judaism. Um, and in fact, with Augustine's interpretations uh, of what Paul is saying, he interprets it much the way we do with that uh, antithesis, antithesis, I can't say that word, 
uh, antithesis between the law and the gospel. He has a huge, huge um, discussion about grace and the law is what he talks about. And so it's with his interpretations that I think we start seeing sort of this characterization of Jews as legalist, um, as uh, you know, people who just are saved by the law or think they are saved um, through works righteousness. And so I believe that that's when um, we have the split there. So where does that leave us today? Um, really, I actually took a class in seminary where we took an entire semester talking about how Jews and Christians split. And this is really, in a nutshell, um, where we're left today, the differences that we've got. Um, for Christianity, salvation is particular. It's conditional. You must believe in Christ to be saved. Um, whereas the community is universal. Anybody can be a Christian. You know, you can, anybody can come in and find salvation through Jesus Christ. Uh, with Judaism, though, salvation is universal. Uh, their theologies are that uh, we talked about that covenantal gnomism that they've got where they are in relationship with God first and then the uh, covenant is the response or the law is the response. But also for the Gentiles, they have um, what is called the Noahide covenant. And it's a set of three, three or four laws that they would govern everyone else outside of Judaism. And as you live in this righteous way, you also are in relationship with God. You also have salvation because of this Noahide covenant that you've got. God had made a covenant with all of the world and then specified just the um, Jewish people for their particular type of response. But the community itself is particular, conditional. Um, you have to be part of this heritage. Uh, now, obviously, there is conversion. You can convert into it. But really, what it is are these bloodlines that you've got. It is a people that is the um, Jewish faith. Uh, and so uh, the community, community there is conditional. Now, if you think about it, as we're making this transition, or as Paul and the early Christians are making this transition, from a universal salvation to a particular salvation, and then a, a universal community and a particular community, um, what some of the theologies might be, and how they relate to the Essenes, how they relate to uh, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, uh, the Diaspora Jews, and um, all these different sects of uh, Judaism in this transition period. All right, and then finally, you've got the discussion questions there. Um, so what I, really, what I really would like you to do is think about how our interpretations of Paul, our modern interpretations of Paul, affect the relationship that Christians have with Jews in our modern context. Paul was fighting uh, fear, fearlessly for the uh, inclusion of Gentiles into the Jewish community. He was fighting for them to get along and uh, work together in their faith. Um, well, the way that we interpret Paul, how does that affect that we? How does that affect Christians uh, interacting with Jews today? Um, also, some other things. Um, another good question is: Do Jews and Christians worship the same God? If you asked. Um, Christians, of course, would say, yes, we, we worship the same God. But if you asked a Jew um, what they thought about the theology of the Trinity, this is the way that Christians understand their divinity, um, what do you think they would say? Uh, and how they would interpret that? Would they say, would you say that we're worshiping the same God? Um, and so you can look at it from a different perspective there. And you've got other questions there uh, on the, the handout. So... I hope you think about this, and I hope you uh, really struggle with how Jews and Christians can have an interfaith dialogue, how Jews and Christians, starting off as this um, same group, uh, split off, and how they treated each other through the years, and where that leaves us in our modern context. Thank you.